Hey guys, my name is Carlos Hernandez and today I wanted to go over a little bit of a tutorial over what a man in the middle attack really is. We know we've heard about this a lot in the hacking community and as a network engineer or a regular person studying networking or ethical hacking or security engineering may know man in the middle attack is basically when a PC is intercepting between two other PCs or between a PC and a router and is trying to intercept the traffic so that they can see it or extract it for their own use. So let's go ahead and get started but first of all let me go ahead and mention that this is not going to be done through black hat hacking we're going to be doing this as white hat hackers because today we're going to be going ahead and doing this for Dr. Pons EEL 4789 class which is ethical hacking in FIU so this is the purpose of this video but let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial because I think it's gonna be a little bit interesting and I hope you guys enjoy it let's go ahead and get started alright so what is a man in the middle attack a man in the middle attack can basically be seen as um, I spoke to you before as when a PC gets in between two other PCs or a PC gets in between a PC and a router so in this example here for instance we would go ahead um, we have PC1 and we have PC3 so PC1 has an ARP table this ARP table usually would include all the other devices that are in um, in that network for the purpose of this I'm just gonna show um, PC1 even though PC1 wouldn't be in its own ARP table I'm just showing you this so you can see what the IP of um, PC1 would be but let's say the real app table would have PC3 in this scenario if it is on its network and the router which is the default gateway in this scenario which would also be on its network along with any other devices that could be there now PC3 is directly connected to the router and it's um, having internet connectivity so it does see the router and it does see its MAC address as well as I'm putting PC3's IP and MAC address here even though it wouldn't be on its own ARP table but we would go ahead and see it um, here so that we can for demonstration purposes so what do we have here right here is what the connectivity the, these two would be so the router would usually be in between these two or a switch for instance but in this scenario there is a man in the middle literally um, there is someone that's trying to attack or intercept the connection uh, or the traffic that is occurring between these two computers or these two PCs for that reason for that matter now this PC um, will usually have obviously an IP address as well as a MAC address and how it works is that this PC which is PC2 take out PC3's MAC address and put itself in place of that MAC address so let's go ahead and see that you guys can have a little bit of a better idea so as we see here PC3's MAC address was changed to what PC2's MAC address was now PC2 needs to get in the middle of these two so that any ARP response or any ARP reply that's occurring is, is going to be going through PC2. So when PC1 is sending traffic to PC3, for instance, it will now be going directly to PC2. When, tr when traffic is going from PC1 to the router, it will now be going to PC2 and vice versa with PC3. If it's getting ARP request or it's trying to send um, any kind of traffic to PC1, it will see PC2 will be intercepting that traffic and they will have access to monitor that traffic as it goes. So um, now that we can have a little bit of a breakdown on what that is, let me go ahead and explain to you the tools that we're going to use today so that we can go ahead and perform this attack. So first of all, we're going to be using these tools in Kali Linux. Kali Linux is an operating system that was developed by Linux so that we can have all packages or all applications in one single package um, so that we can use it uh, for ethical hacking use or for any kind of uh, hacking. So first we're going to use Ethercap, e which basically would sniff the live connections that are occurring throughout, uh, meaning uh, traffic, we can use uh, filter content. So we can use Ethercap for that. It basically works like an ARP, uh, ARP spoof, which we can also go into as well. Um, ARP spoofing is basically just you, you doing the same thing as, as Ethercap would be doing. Um, another tool that we can we will be using is Driftnet. 
Now Driftnet, what it does, it captures all the pictures that are being seen between the two PCs or between the PC and the router. Whatever it's seeing on its computer, the man in the middle, which would be um, what we would be doing today, would be seeing that traffic or those pictures that are being sent. Um, there's also another tool which is quite useful. It's used, uh, It's called SSL Strip. Now what this tool does, it's, it removes the S from the HTTPS websites, um, which makes it unsecure. So what they, what the typical user would be seeing when there's a man in the middle attack, they would be seeing basically a notification that keeps telling them that this website isn't secure. The website isn't secure. The website isn't secure. So when you see this, um, you're basically going to see if you have a couple of minutes and you understand what's happening, you would see that you're being basically getting your SSL stripped if you keep on seeing the same message, the same website. Um, that's that's exactly what would happen. So that's what we're going to do with SSL strip. Now URL snarf is another uh, tool that we can also use and we'll be using, which is basically whenever the PC that we're attacking, which in this scenario we're going to call PC1, um, you're going to any URL, whatever that may be, um, then the, P the URLs that you're visiting will be seen by the man in the middle in this scenario, which would be us using Kali Linux. And lastly, we're also going to be using Wireshark. Now, Wireshark, as we, uh, as most of you may know, it can sniff um, packets basically. So, for this scenario, what we're going to do is we're going to sniff the login credentials of someone trying to log into a specific website, and maybe some other information that we may find along the way. So, let's go ahead and get started with the actual meat of this uh, presentation or tutorial. Let's go ahead and move into our virtual machine. So we're going to log in. Now where this is Kali Linux, as uh, most of you may know if you're in the if you're into ethical hacking or if you enjoy open source programs, you might have heard of Kali Linux. Now we're going to be using Kali Linux to go ahead and perform this um, attack. So as I mentioned, you can use it using Ettercap or you can use it using ARP spoof. So we're going to use Ettercap for this scenario. So let's go ahead and get that started. So you're going to use do Ettercap dash G. What this would do is basically bring up the GUI of what Ettercap um, is basically allowing you to do. So let's go ahead and click enter. And we're in. So as I mentioned, Ettercap can be used for packet sniffing and specifically uh, unified sniffing. So what th that's exactly what we're going to use it for today. So we're going to do unified sniffing, which is basically just going through a specific port of, of your network card. And in this scenario, we're going to be using ETH0. So we're using ETH0. Now we're going to go to host. We're going to go to scan for host to see which hosts are available. Right. So now that we scan for the host, we're going to go to the host list. Now that we see the host list we can pick specifically which targets we're going to pick. Now in this scenario, dot .5 is what we're going to use as our router per se. So let's go ahead and click that so we can add it as a target for target one. Once we do that, we can go ahead and scroll down. And the IP that we're going to use, as you saw on the image that we were looking at before on the PowerPoint, is dot .148. That is a XP computer that we will be going ahead and testing this tool on or use doing a man in the middle attack on. So let's go ahead and get to that. Let's see here, 148, there we are. So we're gonna add that to target two. This up. So we're gonna go to MITM, go to ARP poisoning, click sniff remote connections, which is exactly what we're doing. We're just sniffing for remote connections on ETH0. So let's go ahead and do that. So as you see here, we have group one and group two, group one being the dot five, which is the default gateway in this scenario, and that 148, which is our second host, or the host that we're gonna be attacking. So let's go ahead and start, officially, start sniffing. And it already started. So let's minimize this little, little guy over here. So what, what, what I wanna show you now is basically what you could do if you were to go ahead and want to see images that you're seeing on your computer. 
or on the person's computer that's uh, you're attacking or the being as a man in the middle. What that would be like. Just give me one second. I'll open another terminal over here. And we will go ahead and do drift. No caps, of course. Drift net dash i and eth0. eth0 again, the same interface that we were using before. So we're going to hold it go ahead and grab it from there. So now we see nothing because that what the uh, XP is visiting nothing. But what if we go to the XP machine? So let's go to the XP machine and let's go on the internet and let's just play. Well, Leonardo DiCaprio did win that Oscar, so let's go ahead. I want to read a little bit about that, huh? So let's see here uh, some other news. All right. Oh, that's pretty tough. All right. So, well, what happened here? So on the Cali machine, what you're seeing here is every single image that was being seen on that PC, on that browser, rather, on the PC that they were browsing, is literally showing up here. Every single image. That could mean anything, really. Let's say you're trying to see what your girlfriend is seeing, and you're trying to perform a man in the middle attack. You can literally just go ahead and do this and see everything that that person is seeing which is pretty intrusive and crazy how easy it can really be so more images keep popping up because that image is uh, that browser is loading and if you keep on going and you scroll down you can see all those images that we found using keep on going let's see let's see if Leo shows up eventually he should so let's see if he so if he shows up not yet not yet. As long as it took him to win that Oscar, is as long as it's gonna take to show him up here. But let's see how it looks. If it looks up. Okay, so it seems like it didn't show Leo, but that's okay. Because what we can do now is instead of seeing it live, we can also save all these images using driftnet i eth zero again do slash dash d and you do slash root and save it to my images so it's going to basically create a directory called my images on the root so now that we're done with driftnet let's open another tool that i was talking to you guys about so let's do urls nar which basically just grabs all the urls that that other person is seeing on their other pc so let's go ahead and do that We'll do urls nar dash i eth zero. Basically the same way that you would do that on driftnet, you're gonna do it on urls nar. So let's go ahead and do that. Now it's listening on eth zero. Let's go ahead and open up our machine again here and see what would happen if we see all the different links that we were seeing previously. So let's go ahead and check back and see. So now that we ran the urls nar tool, we can go ahead and see all the different URLs or links that the person on, on the XP machine was visiting. So as you know, we were looking at the MSN website. We were looking at specific links through that MSN website. So let's go ahead and open one of them specifically. So we can literally, as easy as pi, we can just right click on the link and it directs us to Ice Weasel, which is the browser that we use in Kali Linux. And we can literally see the same exact thing or the same exact link that the person was seeing. So you can just imagine how easy that could be or the amount of URLs that people can visit that you can literally sniff or see what they're seeing. So let's go ahead and minimize that window. As you know, we see all these different, different links since we were clicking on several different parts of the website, which is what we see here. So let's go ahead and just control C that. In fact, we can even see the one we just looked at. So on ISB, so we were looking at MSN, so we can also sniff our own traffic. Uh, it's also sniffing our own traffic since it's going through that same interface. So that's what we're seeing that. All right, so now I want to go in, um, a little bit into um, Wireshark. We're going to be using Wireshark so that we can sniff um, the login credentials from a specific website. We're going to try that, and then we're going to see how it works and see if we're successful. So stick by so we can go ahead and do that. Now let's open Wireshark. We're gonna go to Applications, go to Internet, 
and click on Water Shark. So as I was mentioning, you're going to get this, uh, just press OK. As I was mentioning, you would basically, uh, by doing this, just select your interface and capture every single packet that's going through that interface. Specifically in this scenario, it's also going to take what's on on our dot one forty eight, which is the XP machine, and it's going to grab it, and we're going to see everything that's going to that machine or that that person is visiting. So let's go ahead and start the capture. Now that's going to take. Um, let's just go ahead and go to the XP machine, so we can go to a specific website. So let's go to test fire dot net, which is a test site which portrays a bank website. Um, it has that for several different links that can be tried um, to test vulnerabilities and penetration attacks. So let's go ahead and go to the login and let's type just Carlos and then password that I wouldn't want someone to see. So so that's a pretty long password. Let's see if we just log in. Let's remember it. Obviously, I'm not logged into this website, so it's going to fail. But if we go back to Wireshark in Cali and we stop the capture, we can go ahead. Now, since we're here, we can literally see um, sniff on that traffic. Since we were using HTTP or the HTTP protocol um, on port 80, we can just type HTTP. Now, HTTP is basically going to show you everything that's running that protocol, which will be everything that's on the browser and that that person is doing on the internet. So let's go ahead and find specifically um, the test fire website that we were looking at. So this is a get, but we're specifically looking for a post, which is going to show us the text um, that is running on that website. So let's go ahead. There we go. There's post. Now we click on this. Go down to line-based text data. And what do we see here? That person's username, which I, as you saw, I tried, which was Carlos, and the password, which we put hacking is the best one, two, three, because it is. That is, um, we easily were able to find what that login was by just going to Wireshark, checking specifically the packets that were running, and since that website was unsecure, and it, was, it did not have HTTPS, we were able to see the password and the username with the with a couple of seconds by just digging deeper now we do see this password and we are able to see the username but this doesn't mean that let's say if the person that was seeing your uh, Wireshark capture on their site since they also are able to do that if they do have Wireshark and they're able to sniff their own traffic or sniff the traffic um, that the network is on then they would be able to see this which is why a man in the middle attack is not necessarily um, discreet, uh, for lack of a better word. So in this scenario, um, checking Wired Shark, we can actually set, see that this art poisoning is actually very loud and it's easily detectable, which is uh, specific, specifically happens when a computer is not taken off the network. So this will cause um, duplicate ARP replies or ARP entries and the router is actually going to complain when this happens. Uh, this is due to when the R packets are sent every few seconds, it would be super easy to get a very detailed record of when that app R poisoning is happening or what network it happened on and how long it lasted, um, etc. So I'm going to show you guys here how we can even see that we're getting a duplicate um, IP address every time that we're doing this ARP. So let me go ahead and show you here. Let's go ahead and type ARP. Now, when we click on ARP, you see here, this is, this is literally telling us right now, a duplicate IP address has been detected for 10.106, 130.5, which is the default gateway that we were using, and for the 148, which is the PC that we were using to attack. So this means that literally, uh, if they were trying to see this traffic, or if the person that is being behind this attack is trying to see this traffic, they would be easily spotting it. Um, by just looking at their Wireshark because it's telling them there's literally a duplicate use of their IP address being used at the moment. So which is why, um, as we can see, a man in the middle attack or our poisoning per se, which is basically what we're doing here with this attack, is not um, 
something that's non-detectable. It, it, in fact, it's a very active scan and not um, it's picked up by a lot of um, detection systems that uh, are existing out there at the moment. Now that we know that um, this attack is very easily detectable, we can also have some countermeasures against it. One of the main ones is using HTTPS um, as your browser so that you don't have um, HTTP, which is not safe. When we type that website that we were using, for example, on that Windows XP machine. Now most websites do this automatically so that they don't, this program, um, they don't run into this problem, but for example, some websites still don't use that, which is an example of what we used here today. For example, we would have to take, type an actual S at the end of HTTPS so it can be secure, but as we were able to go ahead and log into it or take information from it, the URLs, the pictures, everything that we saw previously, it was because it also didn't have an S at the end of HTTP. However, there is something we can use to strip this S of websites that are using HTTPS or that automatically use HTTPS rather than it being typed manually. And this is something we like to call SSL strip. Now, how SSL strip works is um, basically transparently hijacking the HTTP session. And every single time there is an HTTPS redirect or an automatic HTTPS link, it's gonna turn it into an HTTPS equivalent which basically just allows the attacker to force itself into that PC that it's um, in the middle of. And it gets HTTP connections rather than HTTPS connections. So it affects links and redirects, but if you actually type an S after um, the website, then it wouldn't actually work. So let's put this to the test and use SSL strip as the last tool of this tutorial. Let me go ahead and uh, start that up over here. Give me one second. So we open up another terminal and basically what we're gonna do now is set up a firewall rule that's gonna search for any traffic that's going to port 80, which is the HTTP port, and redirect that port so it goes to the SSL strip um, that it's listening on. So let's go ahead and do an IP tables rule with uh, Kali Linux. Let's do IP tables-t net for some network address translation. Then we do dash A routing we do that for the port TCP we put the destination port which in this scenario it would be port 80 that we're getting the destination from and we are redirecting it to port so we do redirect so that we can put it to port 6666, which is the SSL strip port. So that went in fine. If we want to confirm that the IP tables was able to go ahead and grab uh, that rule that we just added, we can just do IP tables um, dash dash list dash T and then do NAT towards the end so we can see the table. All right. So basically, here you can see that it's redirecting the port from anywhere so it goes to the 666 which is the SSL strip uh, port, since we spoke about earlier. Let's go ahead and now we're gonna start the SSL strip process. Let's go ahead and do that. SSL strip dash L and six. And this is gonna basically run the SSL strip process or service that, so we can go ahead and grab the SSL strips from um, our target computer in the scenario that being PC1 which is the XP. Now I had run this command before so you're gonna see an error but the way that you're gonna be able to see it is you're gonna see that it's gonna tell you that the process is currently running. So since that process is currently running we're gonna go ahead as you can see here it's already in use. So let me just show you how this would work. We're gonna open up our browser here then we're gonna try to go to let's say a secure website, a secure website in that scenario being Facebook, for example, which automatically puts itself in in uh, HTTPS mode. So here we go. It gives you um, the notification here that it cannot be viewed or changed by users, but it says there's a problem with the site certificate. 
why is there a problem with the size certificate if they should go straight using HTTPS? Well, this is because we used an SSL strip. Um, it's going to keep on giving you this security certificate problem every single time that you try to go into this website. So for example, I go ahead and click that I do want to proceed. Yes, I do want to proceed. So let's let me go to Facebook. Come on. So here we go. Now, it went into the website. However, it gave you the, the security alert again. So what the security alert is doing, a man in the middle attack is also being worked through when you're using SSL strip, as we know. So for example, let's say the end user or PC1 in this scenario is trying to connect through the man in the middle or the attacker. Now this man in the middle, which is us right now using the Kali machine, we're able to establish the SSL session with the Nintendo website. This Nintendo website being Facebook.com for instance. Now the website is going to respond with an SSL certificate, which is exactly what we saw. It says that there's an SSL certificate and we needed to go ahead and, and, and accept the certificate. So we went ahead and accepted it. Now a fraudulent lookalike of the certificate was delivered to the end user. That wasn't the original certificate. It's not a certificate that you will see from Facebook.com. It's a fraudulent certificate that you will keep on seeing over and over and over and over again. Due to the man in the middle being able to insert himself uh, to the client directly. So, as you see, we're in, but this security certificate is still asking you if I want you want to proceed. You want to proceed. And it's going to keep on telling you the same thing. If we go ahead and view the certificate, it would basically be just a fragile lookalike of what a, a real certificate would look. So let's go ahead and wait and see what the certificate would look like. All right, so here we are. Basically, it's telling you that it's issued by DigiCerts, High Assurance CA-3. It gives you the details and everything, version numbers, um, if you ever want to go uh, through that the certification path and everything. However, this is only a lookalike of the actual certificate that you would see if you were in fact trying to go to, to facebook.com and it was redirecting it to you if you're using uh, HTTP. But since we're using HTTPS um, SSL strip, we are able to strip that S, um, to figuratively strip that S from the website and keep on allowing that security certificate to keep on going through and through and through and through and asking that PC if they want to keep on doing using a fraudulent SSL certificate. So guys, that is the main idea of what we want to go ahead and what I wanted to go ahead and speak today about the man in the middle attack. As we know, it's a very vulnerable attack that it, if you are not protective enough and you don't take the right countermeasures, you don't use manually HTTPS or make sure that you're not getting any ARP requests or any ARP replies from a specific PC or IP that's not necessarily one in your network or one you know of, then you need to be careful in the, with this man in the middle attack because it can be done by someone that you may even know that could just go into your network, put itself in the middle and see everything you're seeing, your pictures, your URLs, your traffic, and even steal your login and passwords using Wireshark like we saw today. So please be careful out there. Make sure that you always use HTTPS, that you always are behind a firewall, and be safe out there, guys. The cyber world is not something that you want to take any uh, high chances with. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate your time. Have a great day, guys.